Hi folks and welcome to coronavirus lockdown at the WTF. Well, it's been a few weeks now since uh, we've been uh, stuck at home, but I'm still working actually, I won't tell a lie. And uh, I've been doing this little project just to sort of uh, alleviate the boredom as I'm sure a lot of people are doing. It happens to be VE day today, so I thought I would uh, show you this um, uh, transmitter which has a sort of clandestine World War II feel about it. Been building this uh, over the last uh, few weeks and uh, I think it's more or less ready to test. Uh, I've actually had a few QSOs on it so it does actually work. So what, it, what is it? Uh, so this actually is a AM uh, transceiver uh, which is going to go in a wooden box and it's going to be uh, sort of like a vintage field uh, clandestine sort of thing, transceiver, something that people might use out in the field or would have used out in the field. And I've more or less finished it and I'm going to test it probably tomorrow. I'm going to take it out on top of the hill just up the road from where I live and uh, see if we can get some contacts with it. So I'm going to show it to you. Um, let's just take, take you through it. Uh, so what have we got here? Right. So it's quite straight, the transmitter stage of it is very straightforward. It's a, uh, what we have here is a 5 beat stroke 255 uh, tetrode. Now this is actually a, what they sometimes refer to as a miniature 807, so for all intents and purposes it's like an 807, which a lot of radio amateurs are familiar with. The uh, RF deck is quite standard, uh, Pi network uh, tank coil. Uh, plate choke and driving that we have a 5763 which is actually a very neat little tube it used to be a uh, driver tube for the uh, a lot of the Heathkit DX series the DX100 in particular and uh, I've got that configured as a crystal oscillator because I'm only going to use it on AM I'm not going to try to make it make it fancy with a VFO or anything like that and that basically drives that miniature 807. This section here is the modulator section and again fairly straightforward we've got a small little mod transformer we've got two EL84s uh, in push-pull uh, this is the uh, speech amplifier uh, we've got an EF86 and a 12AU7 and there's a small transformer underneath. I'm going to show you the receiver. The receiver is a little bit different because I've gone for a uh, solid state option. I could have done this all valves but uh, um, the options would have been a uh, something like a TRF which uh, it's not so good as a receiver. It would, it would probably work but uh, I went for a, uh, a, um, a solid state receiver which I'll show you in a minute. I'll show you on the, on the underside. And this thing will do about 10 watts uh, carrier, and uh, I'll, and it's and the power supply uh, for this is actually uh, a couple of well three dynamotors, which again I will show you in a minute because that's actually quite interesting. So we'll have a look at the underside and just show you what's underneath. So underneath that there, that board is the receiver, and it's a single conversion solid state receiver using a TDA 1072A uh, integrated circuit AM chip. Um, so apart from that all you need is an audio amplifier which is, you can't really see it, it's on buried down there somewhere, a small little 2.2 uh, uh, <clears throat> um, SMD audio amplifier which provides uh, the audio for the speaker. So that's basically the receiver section and I had a bit of difficulty with that, it was a bit of a fiddle to get the local oscillator right but uh, at the moment it seems to work alright, I've got it tuned for 3615 kHz which is the main AM frequency uh, that we use uh, here in the UK and the rest of it is um, fairly straightforward, that's the modulator section uh, the transformer there on the uh, left is the uh, for what, well it's an interstage transformer which uh, causes a bit of a phase difference so the uh, 
EL84s are driven uh, in opposite phase, typical of push-pull. And underneath, that's the RF section. There's a crystal there, you can see. Let's come in a little bit more. That's the crystal. Valve base for the 5B-255. Power supply input, and that's basically it. And, I, I, and as far as construction was concerned, I mean, this is basically a Hammond uh, chassis, uh, which you can buy quite easily. Saves you a lot of work. Uh, bolted together to a front panel of aluminium, just drilled. Mounted all the components and uh, I've put a few screening baffles in to keep the modulator away from the RF section. And, uh, and that's it. So I'll quickly show you the power supply because that in itself is... Uh, quite interesting. I think uh, you'll find that uh, a little bit off the wall, so to speak. Right, so here's the power supply for it, and as you note, it's got dynamotors, which are rotary transformers. There's one there at the back, and we have two at the front. So the whole idea of this is that this runs off 12 volts, so you connect it to a car battery, and these rotary transformers or dynamotors basically supply all your HT. So what we, the, the setup we got here, so this one here uh, supplies about mm, 360 volts. So this is supplying the PA and these two smaller ones which actually run off 6 volts each, so they're wired in series and then the outputs are paralleled and they provide about 300 volts to supply the modulator and it works quite well actually but it, it is a, it is noisy when you're transmitting and you'll see when I take this thing out give you a demonstration in the field just how noisy it is <laughs> but anyway uh, it does seem to uh, it does seem to work all right I'll just show you underneath so underneath we've got it's really simple. I mean, we've got a relay, which just basic, which comes where the command comes from the um, transmitter um, when you when you pr press the transmit receive, and that uh, connects the 12 volts to the uh, to the dynamotors. I did put some. If you can see that, just get into focus a bit. We've got some filter chokes and some capacitors just to. Uh, help get rid of any electrical noise and just mounted on an old uh, chassis that I had in the junk box uh, I mean you could I mean, if you wanted to be fancy you could have all you could have built this on with it with some inverters I suppose um, probably a bit more efficient but I uh, just wanted to keep it in the spirit of the sort of being a bit vintage you know rotary transformers and all that sort of thing uh, and it's it's supposed to be designed to be used in the field, run off a 12 volt battery. And this is how you run valves or tubes uh, in the middle of nowhere. Uh, you have to have some means of generating the high voltages. And uh, rotary transformers back in the day were the uh, the way to go. Right, what I'll do is I will hopefully tomorrow take this lot up to the top of the hill. We'll set everything up and we will see how we get on. Morning folks and welcome back. Well, I've been busy packing up the Land Rover and we're gonna take the, uh, all the equipment up to the top of the uh, hill which is about a kilometer up the road and hopefully then we'll set up the, uh, the new portable transceiver and with a bit of luck, we'll join the uh, morning uh, AM net on 3615 kilohertz. And uh, yeah, good fun to see if we can uh, do a bit of portable ops. Anyway, I'm going to drive up there, get everything set up, and see you in a minute.
bit of a bumpy road, but we'll get to where we want to go in a minute, on top of this hill. Right guys, here we go, got everything set up. You can even can hear some stations coming through on this morning's net. Got my chair, cars there. That's the area, which is a pole, five cars pole with a nine pole with arms going off that direction. And we've got another one going off that direction over there. Well, so what we can do is try and call in and see what happens. Uh, 
Um, so we'll give that other station a try again a bit later. Um, OK, portable station. Uh, there's at least one portable station out there, I believe. So um, we'll, give, we'll give him a try and see how he gets on. Uh, so uh, GW0, FZY, portable. You can copy me. Would you like to go ahead? Over. <laughs> Uh, GW0, FZY Portable, returning. Yes, sir. Say good morning to you, Ian. And uh, your tracking signal here, you're top of the shop. Um, if I had an estimate, you'd probably be about 25 over 9. So, uh, very strong signal from Bristol. Um, and very good morning to the uh, other stations on the uh, on the net. Um, I'll, 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 I'll keep it fairly short because, uh, obviously, uh, I'm running on batteries. So, the setup here, uh, for those that uh, uh, don't know me, the name's Justin, and the, uh, I'm running a homebrew portable uh, station. Um, it's uh, a 5B255 uh, uh, in the PA, uh, being modulated by a pair of VL84s, plate modulation, and uh, running about 10 watts of carrier uh, into a, uh, a dipole, uh, which is currently set up on the top of the hill about... Uh, about, uh, about a mile or thereabouts from my uh, base PTA. Uh, so it's a fantastic morning today. Uh, you can see the miles, you can just about see the, uh, uh, the, the, the Somerset uh, and Devon coastline from here uh, across the Bristol Channel, and uh, so it's uh, really good. Uh, I probably will make this my uh, final Ian. Uh, thanks for running the net. Um, and I'll probably head back down to the uh, base QTH. I might call in a bit later. Uh, so back to you, uh, G6 uh, TVJ uh, from Golf Whiskey Zero, Fox Dot Zulu Yankee Portable. Uh, G6 TVJ returning. Okay, there, Justin. Well, congratulations there on that uh, portable station. Um, I could actually hear you locally. You did peak about ten over. Um, there's some QSC on your signal, um, but you're a slightly more consistent uh, signal than the Western SDR, which was really a poor copy. Not very strong, only about an S3, but nonetheless, uh, that was fully copied, so um, well done on that. And, and uh, sounds like you've got a nice morning there. It's a beautiful morning here in Bristol uh, also, so uh, another wonderful sunny day in uh, Prospect. <laughs> what have we done to deserve that? Um, okay. So, um, I'll go back to the top of the list. I apologize if I've got anything wrong, but thankfully, um, next station on the list, we return to UK-based stations, and I've got the first station here is uh, M1PVC. Uh, wonderful there. From G